right after an hour and a half ride from Kid Peak. So I'm going to enter the Zero Observatory in the University of Arizona. Alright guys. Uh, you can bring the chairs with you when you come. Like it's easier for me to tell like that. When the Milky Way will be up, depending on the constellation. Like the main To the Giant Magellan Telescope Project, which is the 25 meter telescope that we're going to talk about in there. And the pieces are going to be made in the mirror lab. And Mirror Lab's made many other pieces. And uh, that's why it is called the Richard Karras Mirror Lab. Guys, don't mess with the keypads. <laughs> <laughs> so, you see more of the universe. If you build a larger, t a large telescope, it collects more light. So it lets you see things farther away, because they get fainter as they get farther away, appear fainter. But don't forget, that the farther away you look, the further you're looking in time. So I'd like to emphasize a couple of points of physics, and then tell you how the mirrors are made, and then we will go in the casting lab, where we have a giant furnace that melts the glass, and they're going to do that again for the fifth of seven pieces of the giant Magellan telescope this August. And then we'll look in the polishing lab, where you polish the mirror to get it exactly the right shape. And um, that'll, that'll be basically it, okay? So let's say that I draw two circles here. Wow. What do I mean by an eight meter telescope? So eight meters in diameter. Now we make 8.4 meters here because we learned early in the 1980s that the Europeans were going to build by a different technology in 8.1. And we said, well, how big could we make them here? And the idea was, well, we could make them 8.4 meters. And so we make the world's largest single pieces of glass. That's, that was sort of a joke. OK. <laughs> I thought it was funny. What does this word or both of these words mean? Catherine, you. But let's go look at it. No, just, just you yourselves, and I'm going to pass around this piece of borosilicate glass. Don't drop it. The temperature of the glass is the same temperature as the air above it. If the glass were hotter, even by a tenth of a degree, then you have heat ripples coming up, like you look over the hood of a car on a hot day, and you see distorted background. Same thing would happen. So Roger said, I would like to experiment making a hollow... You have to make these parts not symmetrical. Keep coming up. Yes, keep coming up. So the mirror at the very far end is upside down. We polish the back side first. Do you see all those holes? Yeah. Each yeah. hole is a hollow area inside the mirror so that we can ventilate it. But you can see its thickness and you can see how many hollow areas there are. Cell. 
in other words, the bottom of the telescope. And then we test them both together using the same beam of light idea. And then we can ship it like that container outside to wherever it's going to go. Like how does it, how is it something like that shit? Like those scratches or any kind of things are being like so careful. Like, I think it has to be going up. Like, I live like, like a matter of blocks from I-10 where it's going to go. So. There you go. So we should let you know when it's coming. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the polishing lab. Look at these. On the other side. A convection oven. So there are 200 heater elements on the sides, on the bottom, and on the lid. And we're going to use electricity to heat them all up. Melt the glass without the spin. And melt it for two days and cool it for 90 days. So the question, Evelyn's question is, when will the Magellan Telescope be done? We're working on period number five. Let that take a long time to space. I think uh, 2022 or something like that would be ironic. 2222. Two, two, two. <laughs> It'll be the largest telescope in like six years. With me, Ryan, when the mold has been made and the glass is on top, we put this on top. Now, I don't want you to touch it because it, it still looks fragile to me. But if you can look underneath 200 or so thermometers that we monitor and we can adjust the electricity in the coils. Yeah, I'd feel more comfortable if. They will be trained. Oh,